So far we have been modeling systems using differential equations or signal flow graphs, yet another way to model systems is using state space. Let's begin our discussion of state space using a nth order differential equation as written here. And just a reminder, when I'm putting the value in the um, superscript here, that's the derivative. So y to the n in parentheses is the nth derivative of y with respect to time. Initially, I'm going to make the input simple, just to input u, and then we'll take it one step further and make it for a more arbitrary input. In state space, we're going to take an nth order differential equation and write it as n first order differential equations, then put those in a matrix form. This is useful because it means that we can represent any nth order differential equation with the same matrix form. The only difference is that the size of the matrices change. Let's define our state variables. These are the our new variables we're going to use in the matrix equation. X0 will be Y, the solution to the differential equation given here. X1 will be the first derivative of Y, X2 the second derivative of Y, and so on down the line. An important relationship in our derivation is that these state variables are also related by the derivatives. So X0 dot is equal to X1. X1 dot is equal to x2, and again on down the line. So we have this relationship between the states all the way down until we get to xn minus 1 dot, which is the same as xn, which is the same as yn. And we need a relationship for that. Well, the relationship for that comes from the differential equation. And now that we have this, we can write our state form. So I'm just going to replace the values of y with the state variables x y is equal to x0, y dot is equal to x1, and in the front we have y n is equal to x n minus 1 dot. Notice I have specified the coefficient on y n to be 1. That may not be the case. If it's not 1, you'll need to divide all the terms through by a sub n. Now I'm ready to write this in a matrix form, and the matrix formulation looks like this. Here is my state variables, and I've taken the derivative of all of them. Be careful, that's x0 dot, x1 dot. x0 dot is equal to x1, and that's what my matrix relationship says here. I multiply this row by this column, and all I have is x1. I go on down the line, I complete doing all the state variables until I get to the last one, which is x dot n minus 1. That's the same as xn, which is the same as yn. And that is this relationship here, which is the equation with all the x variables in. So the first term gives x0 times a0. That's that term. The next one is a1 times x1. That's that term. And we end with plus u. And so I have a vector here, which is all zeros except for the last term, which is 1. So when I multiply by u, u only affects this last equation. Now I have n first order differential equations. First order because this is x dot over here and these equations are coupled. So the first equation, x0 dot, depends on x1. The next one, x1 dot, depends on x2, till the last one depends on all the state variables. I've now converted my n order differential equation into n first order differential equations. Let's expand this matrix form a little bit further by adding in a more complicated input. So the input now is a function of u and all derivatives of u up to u n minus 1. I've chosen u n minus 1 so that the system is realizable system. That is the order of the numerator is one less than the order of the denominator in a transfer function. There are different ways you can approach putting this into state space form. I know this is a linear system. I know that superposition applies. I know that if I input the value u, I will get some result. If I input b0 times u, the result will be b0 times the original result. I also know that if I take an input that's the derivative of u, the results would be the derivative of the solution. So I can take this now and add the results together. The solution to the differential equation is y, which is the same as x0, for u. If I add b0, then I'm going to take the solution and multiply that by 0. And so the matrix looks like this. You can see that the output is now a linear combination of all the derivatives of y. And that gives me my final state space form. You can see here x dot is equal to some matrix times the x's 
plus some vector times u. And the final solution is some linear combination of all of the resulting state values. The only thing I haven't taken care of is the situation where the order of the numerator is the same as the order of the denominator in a transfer function, or some case where there is no derivative. For example, y is equal to k times u. In that case, you need to add in one final piece here, which is this matrix. In, in this case, it's zero. But if this system had a direct feed-through term or some constant term, then this value right here would be non-zero. In the cases that we're going to look at in this class, this will always be a zero value. This is a little cumbersome to write, and people have standardized on notations. This is just referred to as X. This is the A matrix. This is the B matrix. This is the C matrix, and this is the D matrix. And then the formulation can be written more compactly like this. X dot is equal to AX plus BU. Y is equal to CX plus DU. This represents an nth order differential equation where A is an n by n matrix. And you can see I've written the sizes for all the rest of these. Now, in the orange, I've placed these ones. That is, if U is a scalar, so it's a single input system, and Y is a scalar, it's a single output system. However, state space formulation allows you to have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So we could have an two different inputs and two or three different outputs, in which case these one values that I've written here in orange would actually be the number that would correspond to multiple inputs and multiple outputs. State space formulation is really nice for doing multiple input, multiple output control systems. Technically, it can be done in transfer functions, but it's very cumbersome. And all the transfer functions that we have done so far are single input, single output. Let's do an example. I have a second order differential equation given here. The first thing to do is to solve for the highest derivative and order the terms on the right half of the equation from the lowest order derivative to the highest order derivative. It looks like this. Now we can define the states directly. Y is x0, this is x1, and this is x2 or x1 dot. Now we can write the state matrix. So I'll write the state vectors x0, x1 dot on this side. This will be the A matrix, and you can see right from the equations that x0 dot is equal to x1, and x1 dot is equal to minus 3 fourths x0 minus 2 fourths x1. Falls right out from this equation right here. Now I need the input. My method was to solve the equation for the input u, so it looks like this. This gives me the solution to the equation if u is the input, and I'll know that x0, which is the same as y, is the solution. I want a linear combination of those, and that looks like this. The actual output y, the solution to this differential equation, is 6 fourths times y. That is 6 fourths times what the solution would be if u was the input, but it's actually 6 fourths u, plus nothing else. And I'm just doing this here so that I have my a, b, c, and d matrices. So state space form gives us a way of representing higher order differential equations using first order differential equations in a matrix form. There's another thing that we'll investigate later is that this matrix form is not unique. That is, the relationship from u, the input, to the solution output y may be unique, but the value for the matrices are different. And the method that I've chosen here with the A matrix having this one, it turns out an off diagonal, and then the coefficients of the equation on the bottom row, zeros and ones here, has a special form, sometimes called the phase variable form. But there are other forms where the matrices a, B, and C may have completely different form, and we'll find it sometimes to our advantage to transform the system into a different representation where A, B, C are different, and then we can do analysis on those transformed matrices.